seek some, lift up your hands, it shall be given unto you. can be a digital copy or it can be a hard copy, whichever way you want. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Am I on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Amen. The message that I got from the Lord this morning for us all you are my world. <laughs> I love this. You are my world. Amen. I'm so glad that God is my world. Not this world that we're living in. Praise the Lord. We have a different world from the world that we're living in. Isn't that good? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You ask me, Pastor Dora, is that biblical? Yes, it's very, very biblical. You live in a different world. You live in a different realm. You live different, and your being is different. Amen. And that's called salvation. Salvation. To be saved from and to be saved to. I came to the Lord Jesus Christ because he opened my eyes to my shortcomings, to the evil nature, the, the human nature, the fallen human nature that was in me. And I realized without a doubt that I needed salvation that i needed to be saved number one from myself saved from myself saved from all the lies of the devil and i would say that salvation is not just a one-off thing salvation is happening all the time we call it transformation that is you realize there are things in you that need to be changed and as a christian all of us we love being teachable we love being pliable we ask the Lord to mold us. We ask the Lord to change us. We ask the Lord to correct us. We ask the Lord to transform us. And that is actually the cry and the desire of your heart. How many of you ag agree? If you agree, say amen. 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 And that's the, that's the glory. That's the glory that God has put on the inside of us. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, you won't want to change. It's only because you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, the spirit of truth, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of purity, that we desire to be better and better. Isn't that right? Amen. How many of you have a desire to be better and better? How many of you have a desire to live better and better? Amen. That's because the Holy Spirit is in you. Because you are made in the image of God. The desire to be better and the desire to do better. Amen. How many of you desire to be a blessing to the people around you? How many of you have been frustrated because you have not been? <laughs> Amen. But the good news is that we can always be recharged. The good news is we can always change. Isn't that right? Amen. The devil tries to use your powers to accuse you. But the good thing is that God will always forgive and you can always forgive. And then we move on to become better and better. Say to the person next to you, move on. Amen. That's the good news, isn't it? Move on. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but I have discovered the mystery of time. Like time goes so very, very quickly. So, so very quickly. And uh, when I looked at Joseph, when I first saw him, he was a little boy. You know, Joseph, Rudy's son behind the camera now. <laughs> he was a little boy. And now he's a young man going into uni. Isn't that right? Time is very fast. But you can determine what's happening in your time. You can determine what is happening in your world. What you're going to do with your time. Amen. Before it passes you by. Go to Colossians with me, chapter 1, verse 13. You are my world. God is my world. Jesus is my world. Colossians, chapter 1, verse 13, referring to Jesus. Jesus delivered us out of the power of darkness 
and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Amen. Jesus is the son of the love of the father. So if we want to receive the love of the father, look at Jesus. Amen. And Jesus is in us, the hope of glory. We partake of the nature of Jesus. It's like when I know that I'm going home, sometimes I drove wrong. I drove to church instead of going home. <laughs> so what do you do? You change your direction. Is it a big deal? It's not a big deal. Like in healing school, we talked about Jesus. He said, I've been dead and now I'm alive. So what's the big deal? <laughs> Even death is not a big deal. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Jesus has delivered us. How many of you know that is past tense? Is that past tense? For those of us that know en the English grammar, is it past tense? Past tense meaning what? It's been done. It's been done. Our salvation has already happened. You have laid hold of it. Now is the maintenance issue. <laughs> How many of you have bought a house or bought a car or bought a piece of um, suit or whatever, piece of furniture? You've bought it. But what do you have to do? Maintain it. What do you How do you maintain a piece of furniture? With oil. With oil, the Holy Spirit. How do you maintain your house? Clean it. Keep it tidy. Keep it clean. So Jesus has already purchased us. He had already paid for us for our sin. The penalty has been paid for. So we have to maintain our hearts, maintain our soul, maintain the way we think, the way we feel, maintain the way we make decisions. Can we say amen? As far as our position is concerned, we are not living in the world anymore. We're not living in the world of sickness and disease. We're not living in the world of catastrophes and calamities. We're not living in the world of wars and strives. We're not living in the world when we try to cut everybody when you're driving. No, no, we live in Jesus. We live in Christ. We live in his nature. We partake of his nature. Amen. When I was, um, you know, doing way doing things my way, and I lost my calm, I lost my cool, I can get angry, but the Holy Spirit, His still small voice would be reminding us. He would tell us, and what do I do? I go back to my right position. Go back to your right position. You haven't lost your salvation. You just need to go back to your right position. You just need to go back to the nature of Jesus Christ. Lift up your hands and say, I have the nature of Jesus in me. He is my life. He's the air that I breathe. He's the bread that I eat. In Him, I live and move and have my being. And if God is for me, who can be against me? It's God who justifies who is he that condemns? Devil, get out of my life. This minute, get out of my mind. Get out of my feelings. Get out of my will. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord said to me, Friday, he said, I want you to look into the mirror and rejoice in the person you see. Whom do you see in the mirror? Yourself. What is the mirror he's referring to? The book of James, the word of God. When you look into the word and you see yourself, you will always delight in what you see. And that's the real you. That's the real person. See yourself in the word. You will live out what you believe in. Faith is very, very mysterious and it's very powerful. You will believe. You will believe and then you will act out your belief. When you look into the word and you see people the way that God sees them. And you will act in the way that God wants you to treat them. 
in the way that God wants you to act towards them. And you see into the, you see into the word yourself and you will behave the way that the word says you are. This is miraculous. This is supernatural. It's not something that you can do. It's not that you can reason out. We can't reason out. When we reason out, we fall. When we reason out, we will excuse ourselves and hurt others. But when we follow the word, when we follow the word, the word of God says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. Amen. He is my source. He's my provider. He's my transformer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And life gets better and better because you are being transformed on a daily basis. Amen. You are being transformed and the way you see things is being transformed. The way you hear things is being transformed. Transformed from the inside out to live from the inside out. Can we say amen? Say with me, transformed from the inside out. To live from the inside out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Deliver us out of the power of darkness and the evil one touches me not. Say to the person next to you, the evil one touches me not. Why? Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Amen. When you look at Jesus, you look at the love of the father. How many of you want God to love you like he loved Jesus? Do you want God to love you like he loved Jesus? Is it possible? Is it possible? How? Because Jesus is in you. How many of you know that you have Jesus in you? Lift up your hands. Well, you said, Pastor Dora, no, I was so ugly. <laughs> That's not the real you. That's not the real you. You need to see yourself through the word of God. Stop being apologetic and start living for Jesus. Stop being apologetic and start living for Jesus. Amen. What did Jesus say? Go and sin no more. Amen. That's the best present that we can have for the Lord. Go with me to Job chapter 29. Job 29 verse 2 to 6. You notice that in your hand now, I've only given you scriptures. Amen. Job 29 verse 2 to 6. This is American Standard Version. Who is talking? Job. Job is a very powerful book. Study that book. You'll never be the same. But study it with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Oh, that I were as in the months of old, as in the days when God watched over me, when his lamp shined upon my head, and by his light I walked through darkness, as I was in the brightness of my days when the friendship of God was upon my tent, when the Almighty was yet with me and my children were about me, and my steps were washed with butter and the rock poured out streams of oil. I love that song. Uh, what's that song? What's that song? <laughs> Pour on me. Da, 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 oh God. Remember we sang that song? What's that song? Yeah? Come and pour, come and pour fresh oil over me. Come and pour, come and pour fresh oil over me. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. What's so sad about these scriptures? What's so sad about all these ver verses? It's the tense. They were all in past tense. I don't want to look back to my old days and say, when I was. 
When I was, when the friendship of God was upon my tent. No, I want to say, I am in the ripeness of my days. The friendship of God is upon my tent. The Almighty is with me. My children are about me. My steps are washed with butter. And the rock pours out streams of oil. Amen. Hallelujah. Not good old days. But it gets brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Amen. Say with me, my life is doing well. I am progressing. I am advancing. I'm maturing. I'm growing in the Lord. I'm prospering. Amen. I want you to look at the scriptures. Go back to the uh, first few scriptures of Job. Uh, which scripture did I give you? In the days when God watched over me. Yes, verse 2. Let's start with verse 2. I want you to look at the ram. I want you to look at the world of God. Now, when you look at this world, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes you have your good days and sometimes, you know, the days are not good. Sometimes it rains, sometimes it pours. Sometimes we are harmonious. We say, oh, you are such a good friend to me. And another time we fight. <laughs> but I want you to look at the world of God. Look at the ram of God. Look at what Job said when he look back when he was being anointed when he was living in the presence of God remember we talked about the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is compared to like a dove a dove is very gentle a dove is very very gentle so you have to be very different when you're walking with a dove upon you remember how many of you remember that Yes, when you're walking with the dove, the anointing upon you, your walk is different because you don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. You're carrying the anointing. Amen. You're carrying the presence of God. Look at Job. What did he say? He said, oh, that I were as in the months of old, as in the days when God, what did God do? What did God do? Watched over him. Would you like God to watch over you every day of your life? Would you listen to him when he corrects you? Would you follow him when he directs you? Would you trust him? Would you like your years to be open to his voice? Would you like him to give you dreams and visions? Would you like to hear him even when you're at sleep? When you wake up in the morning... You know, just these few words, when God watched over me, you can write one whole book on it. That's when you have your testimonies. That's when healing breaks out. That's when no evil can touch you. That's when whatever you do prospers. That's when every person wants to listen to you. That's when every man is attracted to you. Because you're carrying that ram. You're carrying that world. Read the book of Job, especially chapter 27. Is it chapter 27? Is it 20, 29? Chapter 29. Mark it and read it at home. Write down Job 29. Read the whole chapter because I don't have time for you. I mean, time in a service. Amen. Look at the ram that he was living in. He is delivering the wisdom of God. People came to him not because they had to make money, not because they had to attend a seminar, because they were drawing so much wisdom from him, applicable wisdom, wisdom that works. And when they were in the presence of God, they became so anointed. When they were in the presence of Job, they became carriers of the, of the anointing. They became so healthy. They became so full of joy. They became so peaceful. Why? Because God was like the sun. Remember, Jesus is compared in the Bible as the sun of righteousness. S-U-N. The sun of righteousness with healings in his wings. How many of you remember the shadow of Peter would heal the sick? Why? Because the son of righteousness was about him. The son was casting a shadow over him. Amen. 
So if you look at the world of Job, so you understand a man who is fully submitted to God, a man who is walking in the covenant, a man who is yielded to God, look at the world that he lives in. Look at the world that he lived in, the world that he missed. When his lamb shined above my head. It's not me struggling to get wisdom. It's not me trying to analyze a problem. But it's because of the anointing. It's because of the anointing. It's because of the light. How many of you have studied history and have heard of the year of the enlightenment? The era of enlightenment. How many of you have read that in history? We need the light. All the wisdom came because of the light. Remember the Bible says in your light. I see light. Without the light, you can't see. You have a lot of uh, blind spots. You can't see and you fight to keep your, your blind spots. But then when the light shines on you, you said, oh, no, I don't want that. How many of you say, I don't want any cancer cells? You don't want any cancer in your body, right? You don't want any sickness in your body. But how many of us know that in our souls, we hold on to something that's not good for us? Why? Because we can't see. Because in our eyes, we think that is good. In our eyes, we think that we are right. And you hold on to it, but it's hurting you. But in his light, we see light. And we say, no, 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 no. I don't want that. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You look so holy. You, you know what I'm talking about. How many of you have been angry? And you believe that you're angry for the right thing. And you believe that you're righteously angry. The Bible says there's no temptation that's not common to men. But then when the Holy Spirit tucks on your heart and starts to elbow you. <laughs> hey, hey. And then you say, oh, no, no, I don't want that. I don't want that anymore. No, no, no. Get, get rid of it. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. How many of you have experienced that? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Amen. That's what we're talking about. In his light, we see light. Amen. Remember the book of um, Joshua. When Jesus showed up as the captain of the host, what did he say? Remember Joshua said, are you for me or are you against me? What did Jesus say? As the captain of the host, I have come. That means I've come not to take side. I've come to take over. How many of you would like God to take over? I don't want God to take side. I want God to take over. Take me. All of me. Amen. That's the best. Amen. When his lamp shined upon my head and by his light... I walk through darkness. We can only walk through darkness by the light of God. There's no way that we can walk through darkness through our walk through darkness through our intelligence. We can walk through darkness only by the light. Can we say amen? Remember what the psalmist said. He said, Your word is a your word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. So his word will carve a path of light for you in darkness. Can we say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue to read the, 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 the word of Job. Can I ask you to continue? As I was in the ripeness of my days when the friendship of God was upon my tent. How many of you love to hear from God? How many of you love to have God as your friend? What is, the qual qual what, what is the qualification of being a friend? What is the qualification of being a friend of God? I no longer call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. So what qualifies you as a friend of God is your heart is in fellowship with him. You know what he's doing at that moment. You know what he's doing in that hour. You know what his heart is. You know where his heart is at. Or you have his thoughts. 
you have his feelings. You have his intention. You have his ways. A friend is somebody who is in close fellowship with God. Jesus is a friend to his Father. The Holy Spirit is a friend to the Father. Amen. And the Bible says that a friend loves at all times. A friend would stay in love in both hard times and good times. A friend's heart will never change to be to will never change from kindness to harshness. Will never change from love to hate. A friend loves at all times. Say with me, a friend loves at all times. Let me ask you a question. Will that make a better person out of you? Will that make a supernatural person out of you? That's the word of God. Well, you say, but then he does not deserve my love or she does not deserve my love. Come on, be very honest. You think you deserve the love of God? You think you deserve the love of Jesus that he died for you? Do you think so? How many of you say yes? We'll pray for you. God's love is full of mercy. God's love is full of mercy. God's love is full of mercy. God's love is full of grace. How many of you want that love? How many of you want to partake of that love? Lift up your hands and say, Jesus, your love in me. I want to partake of your love. For the world that I'm living in. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. When the friendship of God was upon my tent, when the Almighty was yet with me, we want Him to be with us all the time, and my children were about me. Amen. Round about me. You don't ever want to be so holy that nobody wants to come close to you. Jesus is holy, and yet all the multitudes followed Him. We need to have a fresh understanding of what holiness is. Holiness is never holier than thou. Holiness is never I'm living in the ivory tower and everybody around me is not as good as I am. Holiness is never I can do a better job than you. No, that's not holiness. That's legalism. For God so loved the world that he gave his only the son that he loved so very much begotten son amen that's holiness holiness draws sinners to christ holiness yes brings conviction and it's the conviction that brings repentance what is repentance the desire to change the desire to change comes from the inside it does not come from us we cannot force anybody to change. We can't. We can't force anybody to change. We can pray somebody. We can pray for somebody and allow the Holy Spirit to minister repentance. That's when the blind spots are opened and that person, yes, I need to change. Can we say amen? If you're very angry with your spouse, maybe he's smoking, maybe he's drinking, maybe he's doing drugs, maybe he's not faithful to you, maybe he's violent, maybe he's very critical and judgmental, but you can't change him. How many of us have realized that for those of us that are married? <laughs> Amen. Finally, God has given us that understanding. Yes. I realize, yes, sir, I can't change anyone. But what do I do? You stand in the gap and you pray. Pray for what? Pray for the light to shine. The light to shine. The light to shine. And then conviction and repentance to work. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Well, what if that person does not want to listen? What if that person hardens his heart? You just keep praying. And that's why one of the fruit of the Spirit is what? Long suffering, patience, through faith and patience, inherit the promises. Amen? 
Well, you asked me, Pastor Dora, but how long would it take? As long as it takes. But the key is the testimony comes. Amen. How many of you have gone through a tough time and the testimony has come? Amen. Amen. The joy of answered prayers, that's the joy that nobody can give you. Can we say amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's look at the world of Job. When my steps were washed with butter. Wow. Awesome. Anointed. It's like the Lord is guiding you, leading you, wherever you go. Isn't that good? Amen. Hallelujah. You don't go to the wrong place. You're never at the wrong place and at the wrong time. No, no, no. When my steps were anointed with butter, washed with butter, the anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. When the rock poured out for me streams of oil. Oh, the anointing. The anointing, the anointing makes you a different person. The anointing makes your thoughts good. The anointing makes your heart pure. The anointing makes your emotions clean and pure. I mean, how many of you have ever been in the anointing and you just want to stay there? You don't ever want to go. Amen. You know, I can open my Bible and spend the whole day and not wanting to leave. The anointing is so, so good. It's like living in heaven. Amen. So that's the world that Job was talking about. And if you continue to read it, he was very anointed. He was such a blessing to his community. He had so much wisdom coming out of him. So we don't ever want to leave that place. Do you want to be in a world like that? Do you want to be in that kind of world? Amen. Amen. Look at Job 29 verse 11. Job 29 verse 11. For when the ear heard me, and it blessed me, and when the eye saw me, it gave witness unto me. Why? Was it about Job? When they heard him, whom did they hear? The Holy Spirit. When they saw him, whom did they see? Jesus. How many of you want people to see Jesus in you? How many of you want Jesus Jesus to shine out of you. How many of you want to manifest Jesus? When people see you, they see Christ. When people hear you, they hear the word. Do you want to rise to that level of the anointing? Do you want to rise to that level of Christianity? Then there is a price that you have to pay. Of course, there's a price that you have to pay. What do you mean? I'm not talking about you have to be sick. I'm not talking about you have to have accidents. I'm not talking about you have to be poor. What do you have to be? You have to be selfless. You have to be selfless. You have to fight very hard. Not to preserve yourself. Not to protect yourself. Not to defend yourself. The self has to come down. For Jesus to be exalted. It's no longer, what did the Apostle Paul say? It's no longer I that live, but Jesus who is living in me. So we have to pause that button and say, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus respond? How would Jesus treat that person? What would Jesus say? What did Lucifer say when he was to be thrown out of heaven? What did he say? I, 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 I. And what, did, what happened to him? Six times. I. And then what happened to him? He got thrown out of heaven. There's one disease that you must cast out all the time. It's the eye disease. Have to cast that out. That's a deadly disease. That's a deadly disease. Cast it out. Amen. Superiority and inferiority come from the same root. And that root is self. Another name for the devil is self. And nobody can make you do what you do. Nobody can make you feel how you feel. I have no excuse for that. When I felt ugly, what do I do? Repent. And every time you repent, something happened to you. You die. Every time.
time when yourself, when your pride is being wounded, you die. And without death, there is no resurrection. Without death, there is no resurrection. Jesus is not about exalting you. Jesus is not about telling the world how great you are. Yes, we all preach who we are in Christ Jesus. But it's in Christ Jesus. It's in Christ Jesus. It's not about me. It's not about how good I am. It's not about what I have achieved. Can we say amen? That is called maturity. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of us have got this? And it's something that we have to live continuously. It does not just happen once and then it's finished. No, no. And we continue to grow in Him and we continue to mature in Him. And you know that it's a lot better. Isn't it a lot better to live unto Jesus than unto ourselves? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory be to God. Thank you. Can I ask you to go to Jude? Let me finish with this. Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. I shared with you after I got saved, I was so scared of losing my salvation. Because my salvation was so good. Like I was so radically, dramatically saved. All my sickness left me. Bitterness, unforgiveness, hurts all left me. And I enter into this realm of joy, this realm of acceptance, this realm of feeling good about myself for the first time. Because I grew up with a lot of inferiority. I grew up with a lot of bitterness. And when I got saved, it's like I cried and I cried. And somehow God just removed everything that's not good for me. Just completely plucked out, removed from me. Amen. And I said, Lord, I don't want to lose this place. And in those days, I was so scared. I was scared that when I talked to the Father, Jesus would be offended. <laughs> I was scared that when I talked to Jesus, the Holy Ghost would be offended. You know, <laughs> it's like when I'm addressing this crowd, so this crowd may feel neglected. When I'm addressing this crowd, then this crowd will feel neglected. When I'm addressing this crowd, both two will feel neglected. You know, I, I was constantly feeling like that, you know, <laughs> until the Lord opened my eyes that they are never jealous. There's no jealousy, no envy among the Godhead. When one is pleased, the other two are very pleased. Can we say Amen. When one rejoices, all the others rejoice. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jude, a servant. You need to define who you are. Everything that I do, I'm a servant. Possessing nothing and yet having all things. Possessiveness is of the devil. A territorial spirit, a possessive spirit is of the enemy. Everything that you want, you want to hold on to yourself, rebuke it. If you find it hard to give, rebuke it. The Holy Spirit is always a giver. If you find that you always have to hold on to things, rebuke it. Can we say amen? A servant. A servant of Jesus Christ and brother. Can you notice two rows? A servant and a brother. Say with me, I'm a servant. I'm a brother or a sister. Amen. Say to the person next to you, a servant. And then whether you are male or female, a brother or a sister. <laughs> a servant is one who listens to God and receives orders. A brother or a sister, remember what we said just now? The one who loves is closer than a brother. Brotherly love. Sisterly love. How many of you know that families are very close? Your friends may leave you, like primary school friends, high school school friends, but your brother stays there. Your sister stays there. So how many of you have brothers and sisters in Christ? You have brothers and sisters in Christ? So what do you do? You don't ever leave. Amen. You love. So here the Holy Spirit is telling us a servant, but also the brotherhood or sisterhood. To them that are called, who is that? You. Called, beloved in God the Father and kept for Jesus Christ. 
I'm kept for whom? For Jesus. Lift up your hands and say, God, keep me for Jesus. Keep me to serve the Lord. Lord, keep me. Protect me. Guard me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't worry about it. God will keep you from falling. Amen. Mercy unto you and peace and love. Now, remember, this is the prayer. This is the prayer of Jude. Of course, it's the prayer of the Holy Ghost. So if the Holy Ghost finds that it's necessary to pray for us like that, it is very important. So how many of you know that we need mercy all the time? Twofold, two-way two traffic. Mercy for us and mercy from us. According to the way that you sow, you shall reap. Why is my life like that? Oh, it's because you have been too harsh. You are just reaping. <clears throat> You're just reaping what you sow. You've been very harsh with people and then, you know how come nobody treats me properly? Well, treat, look at the way you treat others. Hey? How come, you know, money is not working for me? I'm getting no money. Look at the way you sow. Come on, you're giving offering a dollar. You're giving a dollar or two dollars offering. And you complain that Pastor Dora is getting all your offering. I think I have more than two dollars. You are reaping what you sow. If you have a bad attitude, that's what you will sow. If you're a hostile with people, that's what you will sow. Your life actually has nothing to do with the people around you. Your life has nothing to do with the people around you. Your life is to do with how you sow. Your life is the result of sowing and reaping. Otherwise, God can't judge us. Come on. When we die, go to heaven, God is not going to say, David, come here. Your life has been bad because Ruhia didn't treat you right. <laughs> Can you find that in the Bible? No. Your life is a result of your own choices. Your life is a result of your decisions. Your life is a result of how you treat people. Your life is a result of how you treat God. Your life is a result of how you've been sowing. That comes your reaping. How many of you have heard of the saying in English, what goes around comes around? So how many of us are ready to change? <laughs> and the key is that sometimes you may be sowing in this area, you're reaping in another area. You're sowing in this area, maybe it's your marriage, you know, you haven't been treating your husband right or you haven't been treating your wife right. And there's a lot of strife in this area. And then in other area, you notice there's a lot of hostility, a lot of anger, a lot of strife. Because what you've been sowing, that's what you will reap. Because God has made it in such a way that we are the master of our lives. We are the master of our lives. You can decide... Whether your life is going to be good or going to be bad. How does that happen? You can control the outcome. That's called sowing and reaping. Amen. I've been praying for people. So when it's time your need, it's your time of need. There's a lot of people praying for you. I've been praying for the sick. So when it's a time that you need healing, healing comes. Whatever you, have to, you, whatever you have received from God, you need to start using it. All that you have received from God. I've received a lot of money. What have you been doing with the money? Sitting in your bank, sitting in your account. Just making you feel good. Then nothing comes around because you've been hoarding it unto yourself. Then nothing comes around because you're so stingy and you're holding the queen in your paper money until she starts to reap. She starts to cry because you're holding her too tight. Say with me, what goes around comes around. Say to the person next to you, it's time to change. Amen. Amen. Every one of us, every one of us, God is very gracious. Don't worry, we are in a family. 
You know, nobody's going to criticize you. Nobody's going to judge you. You know, I am okay. You can judge me. You can criticize me. I'll just laugh. I've matured. I may cry a little bit. It's okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Say to the person next to me, we are family. Say to the person next to you, we are families. Everybody can change. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I was just joking. I mean, I, I, I don't know who gives one dollar. I don't know who gives two dollars. I don't know who gives a thousand. I don't know who puts money into the offering, offering tin. I don't know. And I don't care. I care about that I give. If my eyes are always on how people are living, if my eyes are always on, is she doing right? He's doing right? Is he doing right? Is she doing right? I'll go crazy. You can. <laughs> Isn't that right? You can. You better get rid of that. Even for someone as close as your spouse, you can't keep your eyes on him or her. Is he doing it? Is she doing it? And then for your children, is she doing it? Is he doing it? Like Job. Because he was looking at his children so much so that he lost his anointing. He lost it all. Amen. How many of you know that when you're driving, your eyes must be on the road? Amen. We are in the journey of life. We're all journeying with God. It's very important that we take care of our journey. It's, it's important that we take care of our journey. How do we know? Look at yourself. Look at your heart. Are you peaceful on the inside? Are you peaceful with the people around you? And do you have the fellowship with the Holy Spirit on a continual basis? Can we say amen? Hallelujah. So who is your world? God. Who is your world? Jesus. Who is your world? Jesus. One more time. Who is your world? Jesus. Amen. He's the best. His world is the best. His world has no sickness, has no disease. His world has no curses. His world has no strives, no calamities. His world has a lot of mercy, forgiveness, grace, friendship, anointing, healing, blessings. Isn't his world good? Lift up your hands and say, I live in the world of Jesus. In him I live and move and have my being. And can I ask you to say to the person next to you, you are my brother or you're my sister. We're doing it together. Doing it together. Amen. Amen.